Now we're going to look at uh, Axnabel's offering for a waterborne system. And what is important is pretty much everyone within the industry and, and all industries are trying to reduce the environmental impact of coatings. Now that means looking at lower levels of volatile organic compounds and using lower levels of solvents. Um, and that is how uh, Aqualit has been formulated for use. Um, so what is Aqualit? Um, well, it's a waterborne uh, acrylic polyurethane again, Clive, is that, is that correct? Yes, the ones we're talking about today. Oh yes, Aqualit's our general name for our waterborne industrial finishes, um, but we're going to focus the ones today are mainly uh, PU acrylics. So I think there's a couple of acrylics in there, but they're all industrial high performance, products um, again professional use products accent bell have always been ahead of the game on water base because it's just been something that the company has always done so we uh, our waterborne products are exceptionally good mm. so uh, be it a credit polyurethane uh, a bit like quantum can we expect a similar level of performance uh, what sort of att attributes does aqualit have yeah but uh, they're based on polyurethanes the same as the quantum so you've got that the the mix of flexibility and hardness where you can tune the product then most of them are cross-linked so again you 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 take the quality of that pu and you cross-link it and it boosts all the performances so in some cases i would say that the water-based ones outperform the solvent-based ones it, it all depends on your view of performance but yeah they're, they're, the, the the actual quality of the products and what they do the certification, how hard they are, how wear resistant they are. They're, they're analogous with the solvent based products. I think um, the, the aspect of them being uh, low in odour is, is quite important. I visited a customer a couple of days ago that have been um, applying Aquilet in quite a small space um, and you know the, the, the application of finished and usually with a solvent based product you could you, you'd still be able to smell solvent after the application mm -hmm. uh, had been completed but there was there was nothing um, and anyone who's ever used you know uh, sort of uh, solvent based polyurethanes in, in small spaces you know you, you know even with airfoam mass on it and when the job's finished you can still sort of smell solvent in there mm -hmm. um, so yeah very good uh, yeah. very good attribute yeah, I mean, once once you start taking the solvent out of out of coatings, the, the, they become significantly different. You've obviously got the like you said, the health and safety improvements. Um, solvents are toxic, so you've much reduced toxicity. Obviously, they're less flammable. You've more water, you've less solvent, so the flammability uh, is is much reduced, which has a lot of implications for sites and factories. Um, odor is down, irritation from solvents, nasal irritation and things like that, that's down. Um, so they're the, you know, the really, the, the, the kind of more obvious advantages for users and for applicators. Mm -hmm. um, well, um, let's, let's, let's look at a, bit, a few products in, in more detail and um, we can go into a few of those, uh, those attributes if, you just mentioned. Actually, if I could just say there's some other, <laughs> there, there's some other things. What I was coming on to say, they're the, they're the big savings, you know, um, with this, with taking away the solvent, but there's like little things. If you're, if you're a user like me, um, the, the way these water-based paints dry, they're, they're different to solvent-based. They, they dry in a different way, not necessarily faster, not necessarily slower. They just dry differently. So, um, they flow out very well because they have a, a different mode of drying. They can flow out, they can level very well. In some cases, you know, even if, uh, a foreign body or something lands on a, a panel that you've just painted with a with a solvent based one it's probably there for good um, with the water based ones if you're quick with a toothpick or something like that you can take out an occlusion and with a bit of luck that water based material will flow will flow around it so you know there, there were little things like that that, that applicators like and the big thing that applicators like me in particular is you only have to wash your guns out in water. There's no cleaning your guns out with solvent unless you do something wrong and leave the paint in there and it goes hard. Providing you you follow the instructions, you're just washing your guns out with water. So that's a, a huge saving in solvent and, and stuff like that. Sorry, Joe. No, 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 you're fine. So uh, as I said, yeah, let's 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 look at uh, an Aqualit, first Aqualit product in more detail. This is Aqualit 
isolating sealer 180. Yep. Uh, what can you tell us about this product? It's water based. It's isolating with the eye and uh, it's it's in, in a way it's the water based version of IS uh, 160. So again, you get fast filling, fewer layers. Fast filling means you, you're applying fewer layers. You, you get better filling with less coatings, less layers of coating. It's two component. So you've got that, that blend of the right flexibility with the chemical resistance that the second component, the hardener, brings to it. It's the go to go to one very good adhesion on difficult materials. Um, this uh, product is is a two component and we're just we're going to come on to it shortly, but some of these acrylate products are either one component or two component. The harder is optional. Is that, mm -hmm. that correct? Yeah. 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 So it so it's the addition of the harder in this one that gives it that isolating property. Yes, this this is one that's a two pack. You do need the hardener to uh, to make it work. OK, so um, if we're looking again, clear systems out a top coat uh, IS 180, um, we've got quite a few in the aqua range for top coating. Um, the first one, uh, T250, top coat 250, I gather you, you're quite a fan of. <laughs> I'm a fan because it uh, there's, there's a lot of it out there. There's probably a lot of people sitting around kitchens and things like that who have who, have, who are leaning on this product now. It's a it's a very widely used uh, material. It's one component. It's very very easy to spray. You're not playing around with hardeners and things like that. You might want to put a bit of water in to make it thinner. Uh, it comes in a, a reasonable range of uh, gloss levels. One component, but it's got the performance you know, approaching, we sold a lot of this uh, against solvent based acid catalyzed lacquers. So when people wanted to move away from acid cats because of the formaldehyde, this is one of the materials that they moved on to. It's nearly got the performance of those acid cats uh, and all out of a one pack system. OK, yeah, I, I recall we've, we've got quite a, a customer that's quite loyal to this because oh, yeah. it's got such a smooth finish and being on one component, it's that much easier to apply. Um, so yeah, not not just a one pack. It's uh, indeed, <laughs> it's indeed. a one pack, but it's got much better yeah. attributes. Um, of course, it's got a, a decent range of gloss levels as well. Uh, you can get a sort of a ten percent, thirty percent, and then eighty percent. So, yeah, uh, so yeah, good top yeah. coat. Uh, just moving on to the T two sixty. This is a bit more versatile. You've got the option of of one component or two component. That's right. If if you if you need a two component material because of where it's going. If it's going into a high traffic area where it's going to get a lot of uh, damage, you can use the second component. If you if it's going into an area where it's not going to see much traffic, if, if it's not going to get touched or damaged or scratched, use a one component version of it. Uh, there's there's a number of advantages uh, of just using the one component. Um, and this range, the 260, has a, again that range of gloss levels, including mm -hmm. the really nice dead map, the 5% gloss. Um, but because it's two pack, it still retains what we said earlier. It still retains the wear resistance properties mm. uh, of a two pack. Uh, it's, a, it's a very nice, comprehensive range of uh, of clear lacquer. Mm. Uh, and then uh, the going up a level, the T two eighty is mm. is where you get the mechanical properties again. So really good scratch and, and chemical resistance. That's right. This is the top end. It's two component only. Uh, a little bit like the the T two eighty of the solvent based range the q t280 the quantum um designed as a two pack it's got a couple of different gloss levels very good scratch resistance very good chemical resistance very good adhesion from it it's a, it's an acrylic pu yeah, and then the 90 percent gloss yep. uh, is, is a similar product just, just, it, just is, it is it's the 90 percent gloss version of it but um i don't know so many water-based materials that are polishable that are buffable to a to a full gloss mm. um and this is this is one of them if you follow the rules this this will polish just like a solvent based one it, it really really clear really high gloss it has a slightly different look to the solvent based uh, um solvent based coatings have a, a little bit more of a warmer wood warming effect the mm. water-based ones are yeah they're, they're they're more modern um more contemporary look to them. It's it depends what you like, really. Yeah, a bit more of a start. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Sorry, Joe Simon here again. Just to add, going back to our old, our, 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 our traditional base, base of the sort of super yacht furniture where we started with these, 
the 280 was hugely successful just because of its resilience. You know, um, yachts move in all directions. They have salt water, they have sun, they have hot cups of coffee getting spilled all over the place. And, uh, and, and, and that was our go to in those areas as well. Yeah, yeah, quite right. It seems like just from that small range of clears there that, well, not small range, but quite large range of clears that the research and development and investment that Axel and Bell are putting into water based or waterborne coatings uh, mm -hmm. is second to none, really. Yes. Yeah, definitely. Definitely. Cool. Well, um, uh, any uh, any questions so far on uh, on Aqualit, uh, Chris, coming through before we move on to some colours? Uh, well, the the main question that's coming at the moment is uh, as a waterborne product, um, do you still have a problem with isocyanites? And uh, also, you said you need air fed when you're spraying it. I, I can answer that if you want to. Um, yeah, yeah, go for it. Go for it. Yeah. Um, it's it's a it's a common misconception actually, and I've come across this in quite a lot of furniture builders. We don't need air feds. We're using waterborne. Not true. It's a polyurethane still, so it has isocyanides in it. So if you're spraying it, atomizing the paint into the air, then you should be in uh, air fed masks. But the one interesting point is is um, we've seen this in 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 yachts and in furniture and hotels and things um, where you've got components being sprayed we talked about brushing and rolling earlier actually these water-based ones can brush and roll quite well so the instances where most of these furnitures are made actually in a in, in a spray booth uh, with all the right kit it is possible to touch them up um, by hand on the job which has been quite a useful thing with the uh, Aqualit products if you are mixing a polyurethane by hand and you're wearing the correct PPE for brush painting which is gloves don't get it on your hands don't get it on, on your skin you don't have to be an air fed in that situation because you're not atomizing the paint into the into the air. Clive, are you, are you, are you with me on that one? Just to, Absolutely. From, yeah. yeah no, chemistry no, point good. of view. That's true. Um, yeah. So, yeah, it, touching up by hand fine. But yeah, if you if you as soon as you as, as soon as you're you're spraying them, you you you, you I think the uh, HSC want you in air feds. Yep. Okay. 